All right, time for a quick informal one, because right now I have neither the time nor the patience for video editing, and I really should have been in bed an hour ago. Ornithopter in the most recent version of Flyout, and a monoing design at that. As I'm sure many of you noticed, the last update to Flyout had a fairly innocuous change. Drag was increased on stalled wings. I'm actually a big fan of that change. It made many of my more conventional aircraft behave closer to how I would expect, and my favorite detail it made the Vraken, my last ornithopter, also behave much closer to how I would expect. If you remember my last video, I mentioned that the leading edge devices seem to work backwards. Well, since the update, boom, now they work exactly the way I expect, so maybe I'm not crazy after all. The downside is, my high frequency dragonfly designs kind of relied on the behavior of leading edges installed wings that we enjoyed before. The VRAC N may yet be salvageable, but it'll be an uphill battle. Worst case, I'll develop it into an add-on for FS2024 or something, as I do love the design. But for now, what I wanted to do was instead try for a bird-like approach. I've wanted to build something like that for a long time, and now that the stalled wing meta, if you will, has been disrupted, it seemed like the time to try something with a slower, more efficient stroke that could be unstalled all the time. So I'm going to take off here, and as I do, pay attention to the stall percentages and lift-drag ratios we get on the wing telemetry. So, starting from zero, we have no relative wind, and our wings are naturally stalled. So, to, to start, we'll increase the amplitude all the way, and we'll beat the air into submission up to about mm, 25 knots. But, quickly, you see the wing roots start to unstall, and this represents a terrific advantage and a little bit of a problem. You can see the suspension begin to bounce, and that's happening because the wings are constantly stalling and unstalling during this portion of their stroke. And every now and then, you can see one... Uh, one wheel drop much lower than the other. This is from like that. That is from an asymmetric stall. And to deal with that problem, we lower the amplitude. If I'm flying perfectly, you can actually avoid it entirely, but this was a less than perfect takeoff. Once we're through that, tr that period, though, we can increase the power again. And at about 70 knots, the root wing becomes completely unstalled and we can rotate. Once we're off the ground, the wing tips also unstall. So we've got positive rate gear up, and I will pull out the little bit of leading edge flap I have in to ease the takeoff roll. All right, now that I'm off the ground, I'm going to apply a lazy pattern and go over some of the reasons for the design and a bit about the design itself. Like I said, I've been wanting to build a mono wing. I've been pursuing the dune ideal, and that problem is very interesting to try and solve. But it's not actually what interests me most about ornithopters, especially in flyout. It's no secret that I like my machines needlessly, senselessly exotic, but when it comes to that sort of thing, I'm more interested in feeling out the boundaries of reality than I am in building outright science fantasy. That's one of the reasons I rather like the change we got. Based on my understanding of aerodynamics, it's probably, it, it's probably a problem that the Vraken should have, that its wings remain uh, stalled for too long and it can't really develop thrust uh, during that transitional period. I'm not sure that it's complete nonsense with the right material science and flyby wire, but it's, it's definitely an out there design. And with the control that we have available to us in Flyout, I really would not expect it to work. And you can see in cruise here, I can reduce my power down really anywhere between about 50 and 70, and the shake becomes very low. It's not quite as low as a seesaw ornithopter, but it's surprisingly close. I'm pretty happy with that. Anyway, what interests me about bird-like ornithopters is they seem a lot more approachable to me as a real device. I think they're much more fertile ground when it comes to ornithopters on Earth with human technology in real life. While ornithopters, especially of the dragonfly variety, do offer incredibly versatile maneuverability and V-stall options, and I think they're cool as hell, in reality you can always just build a helicopter. Maybe a tilt rotor if you must. The species that builds these ornithopters canonically, the one I mentioned in my last video, have a deep, almost spiritual passion for invention. The fact that this is an interesting problem to solve and a beautiful solution to that problem is as much the point for them as the specifications of the production aircraft. Now, we're a romantic species too, but when it comes time for the rubber to meet the road and the cash to leave the wallet, we usually aren't quite that romantic. So what about us? Well, ornithopters do have a real advantage. It just isn't nearly as flashy as House Atreides would lead us to believe. 
I've mentioned this here and there with the Vrak Hen, but as you can see, I can lower the amplitude very low without really losing much in the way of energy. I can maintain my airspeed and altitude down to a fraction of the throttle that I probably could with a conventional aircraft. And this is due to the relatively significant propulsive efficiency of the ornithopter design. There is probably far more to this than I understand or could explain if I did understand, but the superficial thing is that ornithopters don't require any sort of outboard propulsion. There's no prop drag here, there's no nacelle drag here, the only drag is coming from the wings and we needed those anyway. So how would this pan out in real life? Hold on, I'll make a sort of a long base turn here. <clears throat> how would it pound in real life? I don't really know. It would depend on how efficiently we could move the wings to begin with. The efficiency of the wings won't matter much if we can't build an efficient engine to move them, and how doable that kind of thing is is totally out of my wheelhouse. That said, if we could make it work, I think ornithopters have a great deal of potential in applications like motorized gliders. The Schmidt example gives me some hope that it really could work that way, but who knows. Oh, we got a little bit of stalling there. This is a tiny bit sensitive. There we go. A little bit of trim will save us the tip stalling. Going to need a little bit of power to bring it the rest of the way in because I did a nice long downwind while I was reading that script. And you can see a little bit of the of the rough stalling behavior that I described on takeoff. Here, I'll, I'll actually uh, I'll, I'll punch the elevator a little bit to show it off. Because the wings are flapping, they stall at uh, they stall intermittently as they start to stall, and that usually manifests as shake. But if you're on the edge of a stall like that, it can actually be quite unfriendly. Uh, I have done a fair bit to mitigate this, which is why it's flyable at all. A lot of that was luck, some of it was by design. Uh, this uh, leading edge shape seems to be important for reasons that aren't entirely clear to me. Uh, Higgy, a friend of mine, suggested that I try it. He had a monowing ornithopter flying ahead of me. Uh, but anyway, if you are attempting one, I suggest it. Uh, the other major difference uh, aside from balance, and uh, I have mass pushed forward and back just to increase the moment of inertia, uh, are these little leading edge flaps. And uh, one of the nice things about the last update when it comes to ornithopters is it increased the amount of camber change that is affected by leading edge devices. And camber is a good way to delay stalls. So by deploying these leading edge devices, which now behave more as leading edge devices and less as canards, uh, I am afforded a bit more angle of attack range for these wings, which is very important at preventing the stalls. So by running takeoffs and landings or any sort of low power flight with the uh, leading edge flaps dropped 25 or 50 percent, which is 5 or 10 degrees, they max out at 20, I am able to both reduce shake considerably at low airspeed regimes and also prevent those very dangerous tip stalls as I demonstrated earlier. Now this thing is a little bit ground effect happy, but that is good enough to put us back on the runway. 